For decades after the Cold War, Germany worked in lockstep with its allies. Defense was a collective effort, and strategy was shared through multiple inputs. But now, Germany is taking a solo path. In 2025, as NATO debated budgets and future fighter programs, Berlin took a different path. With timelines tightening and threats accelerating, the country began building something no other member of the Alliance could match. A reusable, unmanned hypersonic space plane, capable of taking off from a runway, reaching the edge of space, and returning armed. With confirmation that it will carry live, combat-ready missiles, the system is no longer just a research platform. It's a weapon, built for a future where NATO, as we know it, may not exist. The Paris Air Show is the largest aerospace exhibition in the world. Held every two years at La Bouget Airport, just outside the French capital, the event brings together aircraft manufacturers, airlines, defense firms, and military delegations from all over the globe. For most of its hundred-year history, the Paris Air Show has been a place where airlines sealed orders, camera crews chased after stunts, and aerospace giants paraded their latest mock-ups under the sharp summer light. But the 2025 edition unfolded under a different atmosphere. According to statistics, approximately 45% of the show was dedicated solely to defense and security, a significant increase from the previous show in 2023. The main exhibits ranging from weapon systems, combat aircraft, and battlefield technologies. The shift wasn't just in numbers, but in atmosphere as well. Instead of order announcements and delivery photo ops, there were sealed briefing rooms, drone demonstrations, and deep red carpeted booths packed with missile tech. In their actual public presentations and speeches, defense industry CEOs minced their words, using key phrases like contingency planning and independent deterrence. The conversations about readiness came as Russia's invasion of Ukraine entered its fourth year, and as NATO Secretary General Mark Rutter repeatedly called for higher defense budgets to deal with a more dangerous world that includes a threatening Russia and expanding China. The mood was unmistakable. This is a Europe that senses conflict on the horizon. And somewhere between the sixth generation fighter displays and loyal wingman drone prototypes, Germany made a quiet yet bold announcement. As of summer 2025, Germany is developing a reusable unmanned hypersonic space plane, one that can launch from a runway, reach extreme altitudes, and return to base. And it will carry none other than the Iris T missile. On June 18th, Deal Defense, a Bavarian weapons manufacturer known for short range guided munitions, and Polaris Raumflugzeuge, a Bremen based aerospace firm developing reusable high speed vehicles, signed a landmark agreement to formally launch the program. The deal gives Germany full industrial control over a strike platform that blends hypersonic flight, aerospace reusability, and combat missile capability, something no other NATO member currently fields. In fact, Germany's hypersonic space plane project already has a name, the Airborne Launching and Attack System, or AIRLAS. Not quite a drone, not quite a satellite, AIRLAS is an unmanned runway launch vehicle designed to carry out high-speed strike missions at the edge of the atmosphere. The model is part of a broader and ever-growing European push to field systems that can operate without the need to rely on United States platforms. By pairing hypersonic speed with the IRIS-T missile, the platform is meant to bypass ground-based defenses and redefine how Europe handles high-end air combat. Germany originally developed this short-range infrared homing air-to-air -air missile in the 1990s after the nation decided to break from the US-led AIM-9X Sidewinder project. They planned to pursue a homegrown missile with greater agility, better electronic countermeasure resistance, and European production control. Also known as the AIM-2000, since its introduction, the IRIS-T missile has been used by more than a dozen NATO air forces Designed to outmatch threats like Russia's R-73 and China's PL-10, the model can lock onto targets from extreme off boreside angles, resist electronic interference, and adjust its flight path mid-chase with thrust vectoring controls. While manned warplanes typically fire this highly maneuverable, short-range IRIS-T missile, using the two paired together becomes a first strike option with orbital reach and terminal accuracy. In a joint statement, Deal Defense CEO Helmut Rausch and Polaris CEO Dr. Alexander Kopp said the new initiative, quote, offers extended reach and greater engagement distance. The system opens a new dynamic for armed forces by increasing mission endurance and responsiveness. The space plane powering Airlass is named Aurora. Developed by Polaris Raumflugzeuge, 
It's a two-stage, fully reusable aerospace vehicle that launches from a standard runway, accelerates past Mach 5 using a hybrid propulsion system, and can return to the same strip it lifted off from. Only a few months before the summertime announcement, in February 2025, Germany's Defense Procurement Agency, the Federal Office of Bundeswehr Equipment, Information Technology and In-Service Support, awarded Polaris a formal contract to develop a hypersonic research vehicle, with options for flight testing and prototype production, marking the program's transition from concept to commissioned asset. To build it, Polaris is following a step-by-step -step flight test program using demonstrators called Mira. The most unique detail of the models is that while they use jet engines for takeoff, cruising, and landing, during high speeds, they switch to a linear aerospike rocket. Unlike conventional nozzles, aerospikes adapt to changing air pressure, maintaining efficiency across different altitudes, a concept first proposed in the 1960s. Despite their advantages, aerospikes were never widely adopted due to cooling issues and the complexity of their manufacturing. Polaris is now applying advanced materials and thermal management systems that may finally make the design viable. The first model of its kind, Mira-1, validated basic systems, landing gear, steering, acceleration, and ground handling. It was powered by jet engines and tested how a runway-launched hypersonic vehicle behaves before liftoff. Mira-2 is much larger, around 25 feet long, and built to simulate full-scale flight conditions. It includes a rocket engine mounted beneath the fuselage. In May 2025, Polaris successfully completed a rocket-powered roll test, firing the engine while the vehicle moved under its own power on the runway, proving it can safely manage rocket thrust while rolling, an essential step before launch. The next phase will be a full takeoff to landing flight, where Mira 2 lifts off under jet power, transitions midair to its rocket engine, then returns to the runway. If successful, it will be the closest real-world test yet of how Aurora is meant to operate in military missions. The designers of the Airlast system have explained that the unmanned platform will be modular, designed for integration with future air combat and missile systems. Interestingly, there are some reports that the Germans are considering making this system interoperable with the developing Future Combat Air System, or FCAS. A multinational program to develop Europe's indigenous sixth-generation warplane, like the American and Chinese sixth-generation warplanes, the designers of FCAS envision the plane not merely being a super-advanced warplane, but rather a system of systems, meaning the manned fighter will operate alongside a network of unmanned drones, satellites, sensors, and AI-assisted battle management platforms. These systems will all share their data in real time through a cloud-based network, allowing them to coordinate strikes, reconnaissance, electronic warfare, and threat detection as a single, all-encompassing combat group. By marrying an unmanned hypersonic space plane to the potential FCAS 6th generation warplane, European designers might end up creating the most sophisticated aircraft of its type. This system could be truly revolutionary, as modern warfare de-emphasizes the purely manned platforms and instead favors unmanned systems moving at high speeds, capable of delivering vast amounts of firepower upon contested targets. Germany's military stance has changed radically over the past hundred years. In the early 20th century, it pursued expansion through total war, driven by imperial ambition and later fascist ideology. Its defeat in World War II led to demilitarization and a deep skepticism of armed forces. For decades, West Germany relied on NATO and avoided projecting power independently, while East Germany operated as a Soviet satellite state, integrated into the Warsaw Pact and heavily influenced by Moscow's military doctrine. Today, Germany is rearming for contingency. Its new systems, just like the hypersonic space plane, will prioritize flexibility, speed, and most importantly, sovereignty and strategic self-sufficiency. At the Munich Security Conference on February 23, 2025, Friedrich Merz, currently the nation's chancellor, bluntly stated, quote, we must consider whether the NATO we know today will still exist in five years. With Russia dug into Ukraine and American guarantees looking less certain by the minute, Merz followed with a sharper point. If the alliance erodes, Germany must be ready to assume, quote, a leadership role in Europe that others may not want to take on. Airlast represents more than a new weapons program. For Berlin, it's a strategic fallback, a powerful tool built to act fast without needing alliance approval. Given the inherent weakness of Europe's defense industrial base, 
the effectiveness of these programs remains to be seen. But this is the most promising system put forward by the increasingly security-conscious Europeans in recent memory.